Bang, there it is. GM Superb Man has put in his offer for Miko Ranton. Damn it, Chicago! Oh, Connor Bedard just found his line mate. Jacob Chikorin, welcome to the Utah Yeti. So we didn't get Miku Ranton in, but we bolster our blue line with a 6 foot 2 220 27-year-old defenseman. All right, Utah, we are back. That is time for us to head into the year 2 season simulation with your Utah Yeti. An interesting year upcoming. No live stream today, so I don't have the Twitch scouts and the YouTube scouts. I have a lot of micromanaging, and we're going to take it up to January 1st. I want to see how we simulate. I'm hoping that we are a competitive team once again, but I am worried about mediocrity. Last year, our inaugural season, just making the playoffs was a godsend. But then to just score one goal in a four-game sweep against Colorado, it all of a sudden makes you realize, yeah, we got a long way to go. Now, I saw the comments. Johnny, why didn't you go after Miko Ranton? And that's the guy you need. I felt like that much money right now, it locks us into a Stanley Cup window that we are just not ready for. All of our medium elite players, they're going to take at least five years to get ready. By that time, Ranton is 33, right? So... I see what you mean about it making our team better, but if we went for Rantanen, you'd basically have to trade away all those medium elite young players for NHL players that are ready to go right now. I wasn't willing to do that. I loved all of our medium elite players that we drafted. I think I want to take my time, but we do have three different options ahead of us, the way I see it. And this is what I want the comment section to be filled with. What do you think we should do? Full on rebuild, step by step, or go all in? Going all in means trading away all of our younger players and our draft picks for NHL ready, ready talent. Now, we missed out on Rantanen, but there is another player available at the trade block, and I'm going to show you guys that in a second, right? The step by step is what we've kind of been doing. We picked up Swayman in year one, we just picked up Chickering in free agency. Our young players are getting better. One day, we're going to be able to have a good team that works and that is deep. It's not going to be soon, it's going to be one step at a time or the full on rebuild. On this team, we have a lot of playmakers. Doesn't seem like it's going to work come playoff time if we have that kind of simulation with no goal scoring, right? So the full-on rebuild is basically blow it up, get as many first-round picks as you can, and hope to God that you can either land a, a high elite, medium elite, or franchise player, a prospect that really scores goals. Whether it's a sniper, whether it's a two-way forward or power forward with that shot frequency at 10 out of 10, right? So last year, I was, I was all right with being mediocre as long as we made the playoffs. This season... I don't mind simulating seeing where we're at, but based on the results of this year, we have to make a decision, all right? And I'm I'm in favor of, I might be thinking about blowing it up, but I want to show you guys what options we have, so hang on a sec. So, we were talking about getting that shooter, right? Patrick Laine of the Columbus Blue Jackets was the player that we had our eyes on. Now, the Columbus Blue Jackets do not want to trade him. His trade value is not that bad. I could definitely trade like a Gunther straight up for Laine uh, if we wanted to do that. We still want to wait on Gunther to see if he grows. We're going to have to give up some value, though, for a 27-year-old 40-goal scorer. Uh, but he also hasn't signed an extension, so maybe he's going to unrestricted free agency this year. So we could just wait on Patrick Laine. He'll still be 28. We could sign him to a 6 year your deal up to 34 if he goes that way but there was another player on this team Zach Wierinski 89 overall 28 years of age three years left at 9.5 million so let's just add him to the trade here right that would complete our blue line we wouldn't have a Kale McCarr or an Adam Fox a 90 plus something overall um we got to wait to see if Kurtz ends up becoming that but Chikorin we just picked up a, picked him up in free agency 27 years of age 87 overall they're both American, right? They both have X factors. These two guys on your first line more than likely would get you plus five. What was, uh, hang on a second. What was Warinsky's chemistry? I did my pre-scouting. Uh, top four. Oh, no, that's what it was. We could easily send out a scout to figure out Zach Warinsky. But if he fits in the top four defensive pairings uh, with all those X factors, seeing eye, tape to tape, stick him up, bouncer, and no contest, uh, him and uh, Chicken they'll at least have a plus three on the first line. And you can move on from Brodeen there. So, like, let's say we were going to go for uh, Warinsky. We'd have to take care of the salary. So, Brodeen, six mil a year. Brodeen is 32. He's only going to start to drop off and lose some X factors. Now, they don't want him. So, that wouldn't work. You're going to have to give up some of your, what, younger players? Kurtz. I mean, Kurtz would be the obvious one. That would be the one that works on paper. You know, Warinsky is 28. He's going to be getting into his 30s soon. He's going to be an unrestricted free agent. Basically, they're resetting and getting a... 
a top prospect defenseman for Wierenski. Now, I am not willing to do that under any circumstances. I am not trading away Kurtz, right? But the rest of the crew, medium elite Tokunen, medium elite Karpatsev, medium elite uh, uh, Gonchar, medium elite Curry. I don't want to give up any of these guys. I want to I want to give it two or three years and wait to see where they're at. And that's why I'm leaning in the direction of rebuild. We can try again for the playoffs this year, but if it doesn't work and we get smoked in the first round again, I think it's time to say Gonzo Alonso to a few of these players, right? Um, but hang on a second. Lamoro and Geeky. These two guys were former first rounders. And they played in the AHL last year. Lamoro and Geeky. Yeah, they are both first rounders and they both played. So the scouts know something about them. Uh, Columbus would have too many players in the system. Hang on a second. So let me just throw let me throw you in there. Okay. So the league would approve that trade, uh, but to make it go through, I'd have to give them I'd have to give them like a first. Yeah, there it is. So it'd be a first rounder with two first round prospects for Warinsky, and that would absolutely make your team better for this season. But again, you're now committing to a five-year window with Chikorin and Wierenski. If it doesn't work, are you moving on from them? Are you trading them? Are you just letting them walk? You know, it's, it's, it's actually like a, a three, four-year window, really. Because you want to trade them in the, the, that last season. Unless they're franchised, they're not going to get to 35, 36 and still have all their freaking uh, X-Factors and their overall. So that's one direction we can go in. And hell, there's even another crazy trade I was, I was thinking of. But I'm not making any of these moves right now. Patrick Line, A, right? You try to get Line A in there, take out the first. You go like, oh man, people are not gonna like this. You know, Gill and Dylan Gunther. You know, Columbus would have more than 50 players under contract. I mean, maybe I could take Brodeen out of there. I'd still have to get the salary cap fixed out. The point is. If we're going for it now, that Wierenski trade is big. So if he's still available by January 1st, I'd love to know what you guys have to say. The step-by-step -step way is basically me just doing what we're doing. Waiting for the right player to become available in either free agency or on the trading block. We got Swayman, like I said, in year one and Chikorin in year two. But the rebuild, all right, if we are blowing this sucker up, I want to show you guys something. So we have to offer contracts to Cooley and Michelli. We'll get to that in a second. But if I look at all of my forwards, right, all the best overall forwards, you got Cooley, who's a playmaker. You got Gunther, who doesn't look like he's simulating like a sniper. I don't know if he's going to be able to get 40, 50 goal seasons. Michelli is a playmaker. Doan is a playmaker. I've already edited the roster because I want to play some young guns for the preseason. But Keller is a playmaker, right? Kraus is a power forward. Schmaltz is a two-way forward who plays like a playmaker. Let me show you some of his stats. He's got tape to tape as the X Factor. His passing is up at 91. And uh, the last two seasons, 46 assists, 37 assists. And that could have been the reason why we didn't score any goals in the playoffs against the Colorado Avalanche. The real-time sim, it's just playmaker after playmaker. Now, if we're going on a full-on rebuild... Trade Keller for a couple of firsts, you know what I mean? Trade uh, Gunther, I mean, he's 22, but you can get yourself some value back there. Trade Michelli, trade Doan, uh, trade everybody. Trade, where's our defensive core? Trade uh, Chickering, trade Dursey, trade Moser, and just start with Cooley and Kurtz, basically, right? And all the uh, medium elite players that we have. Um, it would be tough. But that would pretty much guarantee us in like 10 years to have an incredible team. So I want to hear what you guys have to say uh, about what, which direction we should go in. I'm going to try to be a playoff team here in year number two. But still, we have to make a decision because I don't want to have year after year after year of mediocrity here, right? Now, the extensions. Logan Cooley. We didn't extend him in the offseason. Right now, he wants six years at 9.9. .9. He wants the extension. I think that number is going to come down. I'm going to wait on that. And Michelli. Four years, same thing. I'm going to wait on that. But these guys are also RFAs, right? And if we decide to blow it all up at the end of the season, instead of having those extensions, I could just trade him to another team. So I think I'm going to remain still. Although, here we go. Josh Doan. I could get Josh Doan locked up long term. All right, I'll wait on that one as well till January 1st, all right? So I want you guys in the comment section, which direction should we be going in? A five-year window, a slow build for our medium elites, or a full-on rebuild, all right? You got three different options there. And then also the extensions on Doan, Gunther, no, no, sorry, uh, Doan, Cooley, and Michelli. All right, so that is that taken care of. I don't know if I showed you guys the draft class in the last video. Let me quickly show you again. We have our pick. We have two seconds and we have two thirds. You got uh, Jared Veshi, a right winger. You got Cal Alfredson, a left winger. You got Gavin McKenna, uh, a left wing center. And then you got this guy, Hector Gentile.
Gentle, Gentile. He's from the U.S. West. That's friggin' Utah. Utah's own Gentile. If we are going in the full-on rebuild direction, I think we could acquire a top five, maybe even a top ten pick by trading away Clayton Keller. There'd have to be a team where it would make sense. But when I think about all the medium elite players that we have on the team, they're all forwards, except for Kurtz, who we got last year. Get another defenseman. If they work together with their X-Factors, if they get them, that could be your blue line. And that's what I'm talking about. Instead of Chikorin and Wierinski at 28 and 27, it's Kurtz and Gentile at, what, 19 and 18. That's the full-on rebuild direction. You got other guys like Dimitri Saprikin, Rubrik, Iginla, Hughes, Sokolov. You go all the way back there. So... If we miss the playoffs, maybe one of these guys, I don't know, but don't worry. I am already assigning the scouts out there. I'm going to get the draft class completely uncovered. Blah, 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 blah. That's enough. Let's get this thing started up, all right? So the line changes. Um, I've sent all of our top players, our veteran players, down to the AHL. We're going to get some preseason montage gameplay in there. We got Gunther, we got Cooley, we got Doan, Gonchar, Geeky, Michelli, uh, Nabokov, Tukin, and Karpatsev, Curry, Douglas, and Lungvis. Look at that. All the young guns getting a shot. So we can take a look at what they look like. Uh, Moser and Kurtz. Now, here's the interesting, uh, interesting thing about Kurtz. Pinch cycle, as I mentioned. This head coach is actually okay for pinch cycle as long as Kurtz is on the first line. If he moves down, he gets into like the minus three category. So I do want to pinch cycle head coach of the future. But if we keep this guy, uh, what was his name? Lawrence or uh, no, right. Yeah, Adam Wright, our head coach, Adam Wright, because he's got A pluses across the board. It might not be that bad of an idea, but we're going to just wait. We're just going to wait for it. So let's simulate up to the first preseason game of the year. It's up against the Dallas Stars. I'd love to get some gameplay. I'd love to get some real time sim. And, uh, oh, yeah, I forgot to show you. I forgot to show you. Last year, we couldn't bring him up. Our our goaltender prospect, six foot nine, the Tower Tamlin, baby. Hang on. <laughs> Let's see. Did they switch him back around? Yeah. I got Rasmus Koronen, medium starter. He's going to get some looks, but Tamlin, he's going to be our starter. Ryan Tamlin, six foot nine, 220. I got to see him out there. I got to see him, even in a losing effort. All right, so up against the Dallas Stars for preseason. Let's see what these young guns for the Utah Yeti can do. We're going to get smoked. Watch. First period. Oh, 2 nothing. Tamlin, come on, buddy. Lundqvist and Sagan, 15 shots to 8. Brutal. Second period. Oh, they get another one. But Gonchar. Igor Gonchar. Let's go, Igor. Third period. Oh, man. Tamlin. Karpatsev got us back within one with two minutes left. But then McDonald's. Empty netter. Yeah, empty netter there at the end. <laughs> Utah stats. What do we got here? Anyone with a 2.9? Bunch of 1.9s. All right. Now, I don't know. Like I said, I don't know if this is going to help out with their uh, with their growth. But uh, just for storyline purposes, if we could jump in there and get some highlights, that's kind of fun as well. All right. The Nashville Predators. Let's see. Let's hope we can get like a one goal game going into the third. First period. 2 nothing lead for your Yeti, baby. Cooley and Cooley. I'm hoping that this guy becomes a 90-plus overall. But then we got two 90-overall playmakers in Keller and Cooley. This is what I'm talking about. We got to make some moves after this year. Nashville gets them back within one. Roman Yossi, let's get the third period underway. Let's try to stop around the five-minute mark and get some good gameplay in there. I want to see what, these good, what all my young guys look like. <laughs> which ones are tall, which ones are fast. All that good stuff. Ten minutes left. Looking good. Swayman. Swayman, big pickup for us, man. If we're going to make the playoffs, going to need good goaltending. Let me stop that right there. 341 left. Let's jump in. A Finisea for the Nashville Predators. Back the other way. Centering pass to LaRue. There he is. Kurtz. Oh, no. Kurtz goes down. Number 60. Kurtz, break it out, my man. Kurtz up to Gonchar. That's the future. Michelli, again, quick shot. Good save there. Getting this. Oh, Josh Doan with the interception. Go with the Doan. Go with the Doan. Around the outside to the backhand. Is that a save off the post? Doan again. Walking in. Oh, my God. Thalen with another huge save. Rymo Curry, how could you do it to me, buddy? Number four. Oh, last minute of gameplay, and Rymo Curry takes a tripping play. He went for a shot block on Roman Yossi. Can the Utah Yeti hold on? Nine seconds to go. There he is. There's Kurtz. Kurtz, get the face off. Get it all the way down the ice. Douglas can't get it. Smith walks in. What a save by Corden. Four seconds. Now Kurtz intercepts it, and he clears the zone. 
And the Utah Yeti hold on for the 2-1 victory over Nashville. Let's go, boys. Way to go. So a very nice 2-1 win over the Nashville Predators. Now, I got to send out the scout again on October 1st. So let's, uh, let's you know what? I'll get some more gameplay up against the Colorado Avalanche. First, let's get to the 1st of October. I can send the scouts back out. That's a 3-2 win over the uh, 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 Winnipeg Jets and a 3-1 loss to the Chicago Blackhawks. Miko Rantanen's newest home. So, scouting time. Oh, God. Let me get to work. Alrighty, so I went through every single scout, every single league, and we started targeting strengths and weaknesses. That will take it up to November 1st. So, next time November 1st, I then got a scout till January 1st. Oh my god, but it worked out for us last year, it's gonna work out for us every year, I just gotta do it, right? Speaking of scouting, oh, here we go. Up against the Minnesota Wild. You guys know the backstory now. I want to see the Colorado Avalanche, though, without Miko Rantanen. A 4-2 loss against the Minnesota Wild, yeah, and a 4-1 loss against the St. Louis Blues. So, the Colorado Avalanche. I forgot that auto-rotate goalies was on, so I actually didn't actually... I didn't see uh, 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 Tamlin in the last game. I thought it was Tamlin. It was actually Cornyn in the net. So let me get, yeah, I want to get Tamlin in there. Has he played at all? Two games played, an 8-9-8 save percentage. We gotta get him a win against the Colorado Avalanche. We can do it, buddy, in preseason. Come on, I believe in you. <laughs> Let's see what we got here. First period, 1-1. All right, there you go. Josh Stone, Kale McCarr scores on Tamlin. That's all right. That's all right, young man. McCarr's going to score on a lot of goaltenders. Second period... Oh, oh, we had a 2-1 lead. We did have a 2-1 lead. All right, so I want to jump into the third. We'll put it on three minutes. Let's go. The Colorado Avalanche look way better. Into the middle. Kurtz with the interception. Good job, Andreas Kurtz. Geeky back for the Yeti. Into the center. Oh, Michelli, quick shot. Gonchar, Gonchar. Gorgiev makes the save. Let's go. First line, Michelli. Yeah, get him out there. Cooley's out there. Oh, he's going to find Don behind the D. What a pass. Don on the backhand. Logan Cooley showing that playmaking ability. A sauce up the right wing. Josh Doe gets in behind the defense, gets his second goal of the night. Wow. Good line change right there. Doan in goes to the, not the backhand, just stays on the forehand and beats Gorgiev blocker side. We got a game. No penalty there. Manson, he's going to find McKinnon. Quick shot, rebound. What a save by Tamlin. 14 seconds. Get up the ice. 10 seconds. Josh Doan. Josh Doan windmill. Doan. Cooley, back to the point, Kurtz, slap shot, oh man, it would have been amazing if Kurtz got the shot on the net there, it's not enough, and the Colorado Avalanche will once again defeat the Utah Yeti, slap, what, <laughs> Kurtz, you gotta work on that accuracy, my man, what in the fuck, okay, so we are done with preseason, Playing our younger players, I gotta say, the uh, highlight of preseason was Tamlin in the net. He made some big time saves. Uh, a two and five record, but that's with all of our young guns. So it's time for the regular season. I've already done the scouting for you guys, and I've already edited the lines for year number two. Let me quickly show them to you. So our NHL squad, I'm going to be keeping an eye on these guys because Cooley, it's interesting, he's an 87, but yet he his role is a second line forward, while Gunther... He's an 87, but his role is a first line forward. So is Gunther on the brink of dropping back down to a second line or is Cooley on the brink of moving up to a first liner? Every like month or so, I want to come back in here and just check on Logan Cooley, all right? But our first line, Gunther, Schmaltz, and Keller, plus four. So we're really going to track Gunther this year to see if he is a sniper. He got two new shooting X-Factors, close quarters and one-timer. So with the two playmakers and a plus four, I'm hoping that this guy can have like a 35-plus goal season. Uh, Michelli on the second line, what is he? He's also a second line forward. So I got the two playmakers with the power forward, Lawson Kraus, then Doan, Kerfoot, and Joshua. Gregor Douglas. We are gonna play Curtis Douglas this year. Six foot nine, two forty two. We need some we need some rough stuff back there in the bottom six. So it's exactly what we're gonna do along with Victor Arvidsson. So the chemistry is there for each line. Uh, defensively, you got Jonas Brodeen and Jacob Chikorin, plus five for the chemistry. That will only last like one year. I'd imagine that Brodeen, he might even start to lose some X-Factors this season. So again, if he starts to lose X-Factors, I want to keep on track of that. Jersey and Moser, power play. All right, so here's where it gets interesting. We got the plus five for the power play. I decided to move these guys around. Because we have the overload 
Um, this guy at the top, I think, is the player who plays behind the net or in the corner. So I'm going to give that to Clayton Keller. I'm going to put Michelli on the half wall as well. Schmaltz, because he has Crease Crasher as one of his X factors, I'm going to have him in the slot. I want him on front of the net looking for rebounds and deflections. Gunther back here with the big one timer, which is what his X factor is. He also has. Yeah, slap shot power of 99, accuracy 86. So that's like one of the best defensive slap shots in the game. So we'll put him back there. We'll see if he can get some one-timers, right? The second line power play. So I got Cooley back here. I know what you guys are saying. Johnny, move him up. Cooley deserves that first line power play time. Because he has no X-Factors, anybody that I move him out with, like say Michelli, Cooley, you lose that plus two. Uh, Schmaltz and uh, Cooley, you lose a plus three, right? Uh, until Cooley gets X-Factors... I, again, I want to have a good season. I don't want to just focus on growing the younger players. If we're doing that, then it's a full-on rebuild mode. But we're still in that step-by-step -step mode until I see what you guys have to say. Uh, but um, at least it's not a negative like it was last year. So Cooley, Kraus, Doan, Arvidsson, and Dursey. Uh, the penalty kill numbers. All right, so this is where it gets really good. Chikorin helps out the penalty kill in a huge way. Even though he doesn't like it, it's all those X factors. Along with Brodeen. So a plus five on the penalty kill with Swayman. That's awesome. Second line, I'm going to go with Gunther and Cooley, all right? We're going to see if these guys can actually kill off some penalties for us. A plus one. And then Schmaltz and Kraus, another plus one, right? So the penalty kill is looking really good. Uh, Three-man penalty kill, pretty straightforward. Kerfoot, Schmaltz, and uh, Gregor, just so we didn't have any negatives. Extra lines, I decided to play the NHLers, Cooley and Gunther together on the second. Same thing with the three-on-three -three lines, right? Very good. And then the goaltender situation, Jeremy Swayman, come January 1st, we will see what kind of contract he wants. And in the system, we are just playing our younger guys. Now, Nabokov, he had the best growth out of anyone last season, so I gave him first-line time with Geeky and with Kessel, right? Then there's Igor Gonchar with Pekka Tukunin and Blake Wheeler. There is Raimo Curry with Sergei Karpatsov and Samu Bao. And then Lungfist with Raddy and Nord. So one, two, three, four... Five, six prospects, six forward prospects that were growing in the AHL, and there's Kurtz on the first line. I decided not to go with the pinch cycle AHL head coach. This guy, Angelitis, has an A-plus teaching. I was just going to stick with that. Uh, but I gave Kurtz double power play time. He's here on the first line power play, and he's here on the second line power play. So we will track all these players. If Kurtz starts to grow into the 80s, he can make it up to the NHL squad. We will do it. But like I said, one thing at a time, all right? So I want to simulate up until November 1st. And that's when I need to start making some changes. Uh, not some changes, sorry. That's when I need to uh, resend out the scouts. So let's just go, yeah, we'll go one week at a time. Oh, and look at this. The very first game of the regular season up against the Minnesota Wild. All right, because it's the first game of the season, let's do a, a real-time playoff simulation, all right? So, what kind of team will we be? Now, remember, when we did this last year, we did not score goals whatsoever, right? Will that change? Jesus, what kind of power play is this to start the game? I was like, oh, well, hang on a second. What was that? That thing lasted forever. Pa penalties. Let's see. Elbowing major. Oh, my God. Dursey with an elbowing major. Get him suspended. Holy crap. A major penalty for Dursey. When's the last time I saw a major in this game? That's crazy. That thing lasted forever. Dursey. He's opening up the uh, regular season in a big way. Goal by Felino, goal by Ogren, but Arvidsson gets the Utah Yeti back within one. Power play for the Yeti goes nowhere. Power play for the Minnesota Wild goes nowhere as well. And a wild first period. Holy crap. Two to one with a major in there also. Second period. The rivalry is brewing between the Utah Yeti and the Minnesota Wild. Lawson Kraus scores on Wallstead to tie the game up at two. Power play for Minnesota. They do not convert. Halfway through the game, the game is all tied up at twos. Davison, it's going to be a while before you can draft some players. I got some nice young pieces here in Utah. We made the playoffs last year. I think we can do it again this year. So third period underway. Let's take a look. Oh, Jacob Chickering, the newest member of the Utah Yetis. And yes, I forgot. Chickering was a member of the Arizona Coyotes, right? But he didn't want to be there. I guess Utah is a better place than Arizona. Chickering had no problem coming back. Six minutes to go. Five minutes to go. Four minutes to go. Three minutes. Hold on, Swayman. Hold on, Swayman. All right. So a 3-2 victory over the Minnesota Wild. Swayman has a good game. Uh, the 3-2, I mean, that's a playoff-type victory right there. Don't, a bunch of one-pointers. Very good. All right, so we scored goals against the Minnesota Wilds. 
Will we be able to do it against true Stanley Cup contenders? I don't know. Oh, my God. Uh, Nick Schmaltz has been injured with a mild concussion. All right, so I'm just going to replace player. He'll be back for, like, that Seattle game, probably. So if I replace player, let me just, because I do want to, I don't want to have a bad start to the season. First freaking game of the year, concussed. Oh, my God. Uh, what does that do? That's the first line. So that's going to put Lundstrom on the first line with a plus three. That's actually not bad. Because, again, I don't want to be moving around these pieces. I want them playing where they are. So Lundstrom on the first line with Keller and Genther. I forgot to show you guys that. Yeah. I got uh, Torpachenko, uh, Hayden Fleury, and... Uh, and uh Lundstrom. So I got a center, I got a winger, and I got uh, a defenseman for the injury bug, just in case it hits us. It hit us hard at the end of the season there. You know what? It makes sense. We just went through Minnesota. They probably did something to our team. They poisoned the water. Uh, Colorado and San Jose, we will simulate past those two games. A 5-3 win against the Avalanche, a 4-2 win over the San Jose Sharks. Very nice. The Seattle Kraken. Is Schmaltz back yet? So I have it on fully healed. Good. So... Now, when he's back, all I have to do is seamlessly, uh, while the game takes so long, <laughs> this could be so much quicker, EA Sports. Ah, oh, I'm hitting buttons and it's not registering. I'm going too quick for the game. It literally cannot keep up with me. Brutal. All right, so Schmaltz is back. We are 3-0 to start the year. Oh, a 3-0 for the Seattle Kraken as well. Let's go. Let's get through this week. Seattle, that's a 3-2 victory. That's a 5-4 loss. All right, so maybe two good teams there. An overtime loss against the Minnesota Wild. Two more games before the uh, the 1st of November. The Dallas Stars, that's a 3-2 victory. And Seattle again, that's a 5-4 uh, shootout win. All right, so 6-1-1. One, one. So the regular season seems to be something that we can simulate well with. But remember, the playoffs are a completely different story when you get into the real-time simulation. So I want to get to January 1st in this video. Let me take care of the scouting. All right, so another 15 minutes spent. A skills assessment for every single scout all the way up until the first week of January. All right, so taking care of that for you guys. View the draft class. So now that we've got the playing type and the skills assessment, I think it is, do we have any? No, so we don't have any of the potential uncovered uh, just yet. But hey, I did want the player type because... All right, so Veshi. Uh, from the U.S. West is a power forward. Alfredson, a two-way forward. McKenna, pl a playmaker. Gentile is a two-way defenseman. That's That could be great. That could be great. I didn't want two offensive defensemen. Gentile is a two-way defenseman. Zaprikin, a center power forward. Uh, Rubrik, a sniper. Again, a sniper. So we got some snipers down there as well. All right, so I will keep on scouting. But like I said, just keep you guys up to date with the... Uh, with the uh, with the prospects that are coming into the league, right? So 6-1-1, one, and one. we can take a look at some of the team stats and the player stats. Um, it's a little bit early in the season to start making decisions just yet. But goals for per game, we are at 3.5, third in our division. Goals against per game, this was something that we were good at last year. Yeah, 2.88. Power play percentage. I cannot figure out the power play. 10.5%? Holy crap. And we're still scoring some goals, too. So our 5v5 is really good. Our penalty kill is good. So the power play. We don't have shooters. That's the problem. And that's my point about Dylan Gunther, right? So we have to. We just have to simulate the year. We have to see what kind of patterns we can notice. Um, but this is that level of mediocrity that I'm afraid of. A good regular season team that simulates well, but then the power play is not there. When you get to the playoffs, you need that offense. You do. You need the guys who can score some goals. Um, so let's just continue the simulation. Vancouver, Edmonton, uh, Chicago. Uh, this is November. That's December. We can take it up till right there. All right. So let's just stay in the playoff hunt here, Utah. Three games, Edmonton, Chicago, and Winnipeg. What do we got? I reviewed this year's draft class briefly. In general, I feel it will be a good year for rookies. So maybe some late draft picks that we can pick up. Uh, Michelli, so he had a lingering injury. That's all right. He was still able to play. A 3-2 loss against Edmonton. A 4-2 win over Chicago. A 3-0 loss against the Winnipeg Jets. Still a little early. I'm not. I'm not really. I'm not seeing any patterns just yet. Let's get another week done. See what happens. New Jersey Devils a 5-1 win. See a 4-1 win. 4-2 loss against Colorado. A 4-3 win against the Stanley Cup champions from two years ago. Last year it was the Florida Panthers. 10-5 and one though. I mean, pretty good. Let's go another week. As long as we're simulating like this, I have no problems. 5-2 loss. 2-1 loss and a 2-1 win. Okay. 11-7 and one. Second in our division. Yeah, I think we let's go to the end of the month. This is fine. This simulation is fine right now. 2-1 win, a 2-1 loss to the Islanders. Uh, Declan Chisholm, let's see, one year left at 7-7-5-0. Oh, he's going to waivers. Let me take a look at the player, 77. 
Nah, there's nothing there. No, decline that player. I don't need to pick him up in waivers. A 2-0 loss to Boston, an 8-3 loss to Boston, and we are up here in December. So, a good start to the season, but in the last couple of weeks, a few losses. The regulation losses are piling up 12, 10, and 1, and uh, it's probably because of our lack of goal scoring, right? So, let me, yeah, let me do my due diligence here. Hang on a sec. Uh, view draft class. Just because our scouts are back out. Anything uncovered potential-wise? Nothing potential-wise. Okay, so I'm going to have to scout potential to find out. But some gems, Saprikin, at number five. Maybe he's somebody worth going after. Uh, all right, so hang on a second. Team stats, player stats, all that good stuff. Is it our power play that's holding us back? Uh, goals four per game. All right, so we have uh, our goal scoring has slowed down big time. We are scoring less than three goals four per game. Got to sort that out. Uh, we're actually, yeah, we're actually allowing more goals per game than we're scoring now. That's a big problem. Power play percentage, 11.5%. All right, so the shooter is becoming a problem. It's not just becoming a problem in the playoffs. It's becoming a problem during the regular season now as well. So let me take a look at the individual player stats. What do we got for the power play? Uh, all right, so forwards. So Clayton Keller with 18 points in 23 games played. Gunther, six goals. He's not a shooter. He's not. I mean, there's some shots on the net. A 7.7 .7 shot percentage. He's got a hard shot, but he doesn't have an accurate shot. It's not mid-90s. His shooting is five-star, though. I don't know how the game interprets it in terms of who's successful and who not, but 7.7% .7 shooting accuracy, that sucks. Uh, but Shelly, 15. Cooley with 15. Look, look, we have so many playmakers. We just do. Cooley is a straight-up playmaker, man. Shooting percentage, 1.9%. Oh, my God. Power play points. Let's see. Three for Michelli. Arvidsson has two. And what about defensemen? What do we got over here? Chikorin with 12 points. Chikorin's doing his job. All right, so I, I'll listen to what you guys said last year about Roslovic. Is there somebody on the team that is just incredibly... No, there's not even, like, one player that's... I think it's just our power play. The reason we're losing games, we're not scoring goals in the power play. It's not our 5v5 defense. We are not scoring goals, all right? So, I could make some line changes. I could see if uh, Cooley... Maybe Cooley's now a first liner. I don't know. Let's see what we could do. Oh, man, this is brutal. Um. All right, so still a plus four. What the... Okay, so we got X-Factors. Logan Cooley got some X-Factor. Shock and awe. And what is that one? That one is relentless. Great off-balance shots and passes. Shock and awe. So he can shoot the puck now. Okay. So, man, that's interesting. Michelli has a third eye, and he's not helping. It's just the... What if I put, like... Oh, okay. Gunther and Cooley now. It's okay, what about Gunther, Cooley, and Keller on the first line? It's only a plus four. Well... I got to get some shooters alongside of Cooley. You know what? I think I might want to try Cooley with uh, Gunther and with Kraus because Kraus is the power forward. He will take some shots. Cooley is a playmaker. He's still a second line forward. And Gunther on the first line, he's got 14. I'm just I'm losing out a little bit, but then I can put Michelli up there. Michelli was a minus one. I want to break up that second line. The second line wasn't getting it done. So I'm going to move Cooley and Gunther down to the second line with the plus three. We still have the plus two on the first line. We'll see how we perform here. Uh, these guys, the first line, yeah, they're doing fine. Plus one with their plus five. Second line's doing five. And third line, they're just fine. It's the power play. We got to get the power play going. So now that Cooley has, uh, that, can I take Cooley and put him in this lineup and still get the plus five? No, we cannot. See? Big pain in the ass. What about Chikorin? Or, uh, Michelli, sorry. Plus four. See what I mean? Oh, my God, the power play. We just have too many playmakers. We just do. So Schmaltz maybe for Kraus. Get some more shooters on there. So you got Kraus, you got Gunther, uh, Keller, and then if I put Cooley with instead of Michelli, you know, I'm going to go with Michelli instead of Cooley there. Maybe Chikorin. Is he not helping out offensively? Uh, maybe if I get Dursey in there. Yeah, let me try to switch up Dursey. We'll get the offensive defenseman. Now I got the plus four again. I can get Cooley with the plus three. He's got shock and awe, so he can take some shots. Yeah, I'll try Cooley on that side. And then over here, you got Schmaltz, uh, Michelli, Doan. Yeah, our power, we need we need shooters. This is the problem we're running into, right? And I, we can't just go out and get a shooter right now. I know you're gonna say Ranton and Johnny Ranton, and I'm not going out and paying 13 million or 14 million for a guy in free agency. So we got to figure this out. We got to figure this out quickly. All right. So I'm gonna try Cooley and Gunther on the second line. We'll see how that performs. Let's get some simulating in. How is our AHL squad doing? Hang on, nine seven and one for the Tucson Roadrunners. Blake Wheeler, good job, buddy. 
So, uh, Cooley did get some X-Factors there, but we are struggling. We are definitely struggling right now to score on uh, the power play. So, games against Ottawa and Montreal, East Coast games. Yeah, let's get this week done. Come on now, we need some wins. We need to bounce back. 4-2 win over Ottawa. 3-2 win over Ottawa. Nice job. I'll just take the two points. 2-1 win over Montreal. Beautiful. Beautiful way to answer back. Was that because of the line change? Is it just coincidence? I don't know. But 15-10-1. Yeah, we have a little bit too many regulation losses so far for my liking. 10. I mean, the Oilers have 3. The Ducks have 7. The Rangers have 4. The Bruins have 5. Yeah, the 10 regulation losses. Because like I said, you go on a 3-game losing streak and... You're, you're getting close to 500, right? So let's get another week done. Tampa, Edmonton, and Nashville. Tampa, that's a 2-0 victory. We get a point against Edmonton, and we get a point against Nashville. There you go. So we gave up two points to Nashville. Where are they? 11-13-1. Yeah, we want to stay ahead of them. Another big two games here. Chicago, that's a big game. I want to see that Chicago game. I want to watch it. Uh, Utah player, Jerome Moser has been injured with a sprained ankle. Estimated return is December 29th. So I'll just replace him. He's actually going to be gone for a few weeks here so let me take a look at the line change situation Moser's on the second line with Dursey maybe I can move up Kesselring um although we have Hayden Fleury who comes off the bench and I know he fits in on every line so hang on a second yeah Fleury fits there uh but Walker does too sorry let me move Walker up and then Fleury and Kesselring can move back down there so when Moser comes back replace him with Fleury and move him back up to the second line got it all right, so the uh, the Chicago Blackhawks, right? They acquired Rantanen. Let's take a look at their team here. Uh, I would like to get, because uh, this could be a team that we're going up against. Oh, my God. Connor Bedard and Miko Rantanen. 29 years of age, $14 million per. Hey, I might be able to get him this season. You never know. Or this offseason. Jesus, look at the amount of points this guy has. And Connor Bedard, Jesus. Yeah, they were made for one another. So let's see. If uh, Rantanen in this universe, if we have to match up against Chicago for a playoff matchup, let's see how we simulate. Can we score goals, right? That's the thing I'm interested in. Colorado had that stacked team. Chicago, can we score goals against them? Michelli, 5v5, so the power play didn't uh, chip in there. Peronovic, a defenseman, offensive defenseman, scoring for the Chicago Blackhawks. Shots are good. I don't think 5v5, anyone's got a problem with our team. We're fine defensively. We got a good goalie. We play fine 5v5. It was uh, Roslovic, right, last year who had the crazy minus that was like minus 12. We have no one on our team like that. It's just our lack of goal scoring on the power play. And in today's NHL, I mean, players are getting like 50 points on the power play per year. We can't be, we can't have a power play that's not performing. That's the key to winning a Stanley Cup. You got to keep the puck out of the net. You got to be able to score in bunches when in this real-time simulation. So Kurashev on the first line, he's going to get the second goal of the game for Chicago. See what I mean? Doesn't this remind you a lot of last year in the playoffs? We just can't score. Third period underway. What do we got here? Power play for Utah. Goes nowhere. This is a problem. Yeah. Power play for Utah. This is a major problem. It's not 5v5. It's not keeping the puck out of the net. It is our lack of goal scoring. And it's because we have too many playmakers on this team, right? So we got some harsh decisions. I'm going to still try to make the playoffs, but I told you guys, you got the three choices, right? We are, we, we look like a good team on paper, but we don't have goal scorers. And that's where it's like, you got to blow it up and you got to start fresh. I can maybe target a few players here and there, but then it's a short window. And I don't know if our young guns are going to be ready to go when these guys are, you know, trailing off. That's a tough one, man. That's only one game. Maybe it was coincidence, but I am noticing that trend that we are not we are not scoring in bunches in that real-time simulation. So I want to get it down here to January 1st. Let's see if we can have a good finish to this month. Uh, Toronto and Buffalo, two Eastern Conference teams. 3-2 loss to Toronto, a 3-2 win over Buffalo. We are third in our division with 37 points, though. We're tied with all three teams. Uh, and then the wild card in the West is 29 points. So... Yeah, we're, we're only eight points ahead. It's not enough. Uh, Rangers and the LA Kings. Let's simulate past these two. We should have Moser coming back soon. Uh, Kerfoot's been injured with a hip pointer. Estimated return is January 12th. Oh, my God. Replace him. Uh, that's going to be our penalty killer as well. Going to have to take care of that. So let's just get to January 1st, and we can reassess the entire situation. All right, so game up against. I'll just uh, – no, I want to get him back in there. Yeah, I do want to get him back in there. Every game matters right now. Every game is very important. Uh, so defense, 
Uh, Bro Dean, yep, so move Walker down. Take Flurry out with the quick substitution. Moser right back in there. We're good to go. And then we have Kerfoot, who's still out. Oh, my God. Jacob Chickering's been injured with a bruised arm. Estimated return is January 28th. A bruised arm takes him out for a month. Oh, my God. All right, stop the simulation right there. 19, 14, and 3. The injuries are piling up and the lack of offense. So we go from being a, uh, a team that looks good on paper, but I'm seeing major flaws here. So let me just create a save file. There you go. Let me create another one just so I don't screw it up. All right, and we will summarize what we've seen in this video. So the point totals, yeah. I mean, Clayton Clutch Keller's got 26 points in 36 games played. We are not scoring goals. It's clear. The offense is nowhere to be found for us this season. And we have some chemistry, too. We are keeping the puck out of the net. I'd be willing to say we're keeping the puck out of the net. But goals for per game, we are second worst in our division. If I take that into the entire league, goals for per game. Hang on a second. This is interesting now. Goals for per game. We are the fifth worst team in terms of goal scoring in the entire NHL. Goals against per game, we are the, we are tied for the second best team for goals against per game. So a defensive-minded team right here. Swayman's doing a great job. Power play percentage, 12%. It is the third worst power play in the NHL. That is the problem. Our offense would go up if our power play went up. That right there is the problem. And the penalty kill percentage, 84. One of the best penalty kills in the NHL. So we're keeping the puck out of the net. We are not scoring goals, all right? So let me do some due diligence so you guys have something to talk about. Let me go around the league and see what the uh, the story is on each team here, all right? So Anaheim, they're 21-11-3. They're Boston, 22-9-3. and three. Uh... Uyghur, Anderson, I want to take a look at Columbus, hang on, 21, 14, and 1, Warinsky is still on the block, yeah, let me just go through all the blocks, <coughs> then we'll take a look at the team, uh, skaters matching the block, alright, so defensemen, we're looking for goal scorers here, so I'm not even going to look at their contract situation unless it's somebody Uyghur, and no, I, we got our defensemen, um, even, see, this is the thing with Warinsky, even if we got Warinsky, it's just that we're keeping the puck out of the net more, we need goal scoring, that's not, that's, that ain't it. That ain't it. That trade ain't it. If you want to get uh, Line A in there with it, 86. How many goals does Line A have on the year? Seven. Only got 17. He shoots the puck, though. 300, 300. And, and with those X factors, now Logan Cooley has some X factors. You might get a plus five with those, right? So uh, we got to think about that. We got to get a goal scorer. Uh, Wierenski, I don't think, is the guy, though. I think that trade value just hurts us. Uh, Tulio, Clevin. Uh, Adrian Kempe, that's a rental, 29 years of age. That's the mistake that we made last year. A sniper, though. How many goals? Only seven goals. Doesn't simulate like a sniper. We're looking for an overpowered sniper. Somebody who's a 40-goal scorer, guaranteed. Hamilton, another defenseman that you can go after. Yeah, they just... I think, I think, ladies and gentlemen, uh, done another defenseman you can go after. I think we try to make the playoffs, and then we, we decide to blow it up at the end of this season. Because unless you got someone coming in, it's just going to be more of the same. Yeah, there's no forwards available. They're just defensemen. 19, 14, and 3. We are in that mediocrity, and we're just getting older. Uh, what else could I look at? What else could I look at? Progress reports. Let's take a look at the progress reports here. Let's take a look at the individual player stats as well. Just give me a second. Um, I want to go down there to the in the system. What do we got? Any uh, modification? Nabokov grows. Nabokov is 77 overall. Oh, my God. He might be able to make the NHL this season. Curry. Uh, some good growth there from Curry. Gonchar. Good growth by Gonchar. All right, so Gonchar grew. Good. Karpatsev. Good growth by Karpatsev. Froats. Uh, where's... Uh, oh, man. Don't tell me. The one guy. Don't tell me. Oh, Jesus. Where is he? Did I miss... Ah, uh, Kurtz. What the hell? Uh, maybe Kurtz should be in the NHL. I don't know. You know what? If we're missing the playoffs, it might be a good idea to bring Kurtz up and play him on the first line. But uh, what was his point totals? Uh, two goals, 15 assists. I mean, he's getting points. It's fine. It's good to see all these other guys. And if we, uh, maybe it's just he's not going to grow in his first year, but he grows in his second year, like this guy Igor Gonchar. He had no growth last season, right? Um, all right, so I checked out that. I Let me take a look at the, uh, hang on a sec. Let me take a look at the individual player stats for our team. Um, again, I don't have a problem with any of our players and the way they're playing. We just don't have goal scorers. That's the problem. We have too many of the same players. Kel uh, Keller's fine. Cooley, that's fine. Kraus, that's fine. Look, like nobody has more than 10 goals so far. We don't even have like a 20 goal scorer on this team, basically. Schmaltz and Gent Genther is not a goal scorer, guys. He's just not. He is not. I don't know what it is. He's power play goals. He's got one power. That's ridiculous. He's on pace for like two or three power play goals this season. It's just not happening, man. 
It ain't happening. Uh, yeah, all right. And then the defensive side of things, uh, Chikorin, he's doing fine. They're all plus players. They're all plus players. And so I go to the plus minus, uh, minus four. Yeah, there's no one that really jumps out at you. It's, it's obvious what it is. It's goal scoring. And then Swayman, 15, 12, and two, a 919 save percentage. I'm getting a great season out of Jeremy Swayman. Oh, God. If he's having a great season, how much does he want? Yeah, let me take a look at the extensions now. We're at January 1st, right? I can extend these guys. Hang on a second. Let's see what Swayman has become. Uh, Swayman. He doesn't want an extension. Oh, God. <laughs> it's actually not that bad. Maybe a six-year maybe a six year extension. Bring it down to like $8 million per season. I mean, he's having a good season. And this guy could be the guy that just gets you into the... That helps you compete even if you go in the rebuild. I need a goaltender for the future. I wouldn't mind trying six years at $8 million per. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say about that. Uh, defensively, no, we're not going to sign any of those guys. And uh, Cooley, let's see. Should I have offered him a contract? It's going down, but maybe you want to lock him up now. You might want to go nine times eight and a half. You could probably do that. Or eight times eight and a half, sorry. Yeah, that might be a good idea to lock Cooley in because he just got X-Factor, so it does look like he's growing. Uh, Michelli, let's see you. Uh, oh, good. Oh, you could definitely lock up Michelli, but are we trading Michelli away? We got to figure out who we're keeping, who we're moving on from. Like, uh, man, I don't even know. Like, you could just say the two playmakers on this team, Cooley and Doan, and then get rid of Keller and Michelli, and you'd have a lot, and then you just move Doan up to the top six and start playing him. I don't know what you want to do. I don't know what you want to do. I have to wait to see what you guys have to say. And then the, uh, the uh, yeah, view the draft class, right? So I will send out the scouts again. Do we have anything unlocked? No, we do not have anything unlocked in terms of potential. So we don't know what we want to target yet. Um, I do have my eyes on that defenseman from Utah, baby. Uh, and then and Veshi from Utah as well. We could just say they're from Utah. It's the U.S. West. Hughes? No, it's the U.S. Central. It's only the U.S. West. I took a look at it. Yeah, I took a look at it. So it's the U.S. West has Utah in it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so we are going to end it right there. I need to know right now because we are stuck in that in that mediocrity category. And if we're going to break out of it, it, something big needs to happen. Either we're making major trades right now for a sniper, Wierinski. I mean, I don't like Wierinski. I don't think that helps out our team. we got to go out there and steal a sniper from somebody. Um, I'll give you guys a look at the teams, like the Senators, the Canadians, the Red Wings at the bottom of the Atlantic. The Devils, the Capitals, the Hurricanes, the bottom of the Metro. Uh, the Sharks, the Golden Knights, and the Kings, the bottom of the Pacific. And the Blues, the Wild, the Avalanche. The, the Avalanche, bottom of the Central. Oh my God, thank goodness. They lost out on Ranton and that really hurt their team. The ba but basically, if you guys think there's any good snipers on those teams that you could trade for because they're not in a playoff position, let me know. But I got to tell you guys, I think I'm leaning towards, you, you try it for this season, you see how the playoffs go. And then the year two NHL entry draft, boom, you blow it up. You put your time and effort in to see who you want to keep on the team. You take a look at the chemistry situation. Cooley and Kurtz, to me. Cooley and Kurtz are the only... Cooley, Kurtz, and Doan, and all those medium elite players, are the only ones locked in. But all the other guys, like Schmaltz and Kraus and Keller and Michelli and Gunther and Chikorin and Brodeen and Moser and Dursey, I think they're all trade bait. I really do. So if you guys made it this far, remember, remember to subscribe and turn on notifications. You don't want to miss anything. Next video, we're taking it from January 1st to the playoffs. Can we make the playoffs or should we just start the blow up right now? Start trading away everything. Let me know what you guys think and I will see you in the next one.